and gentlemen. So we finished up yesterday talking about profit, and here's our diagram of profit. So we know we will always produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We add in our average variable cost line, and then we add in our average total cost line. So notice that um, marginal cost is not actually maybe where it ought to be, uh, you know, from an artistic standpoint because it isn't showing us, it's not intersecting at that minimum point where we said it always needs to. It will always be right at that minimum. So maybe it ought to be over here artistically. Obviously it doesn't really matter um, because we aren't necessarily to scale. Remember what we learned there, okay? So we're always gonna produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And then the difference between price which is our demand curve, and average total cost becomes our per unit profit. And then you multiply that by the number of units, and that tells us our total profit. The question is, what happens when the price is lower? What do we do? So then we are considering our loss minimization. So we've talked about marginal revenue equaling marginal cost. We want to produce here because that's where we're going to maximize profit. But likewise, we're also going to minimize our losses by producing there. We always want to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, no matter what. So even if we're not going to make money, if we're not going to make a profit, I should say, as long as price is greater than minimum average variable cost, we'll still produce, and you'll see why. So now the price has dropped, okay? so. We know that we're still at marginal revenue equaling price, which equals the demand curve, that horizontal, perfectly elastic demand curve. But we dropped our price down now to $81. So let's add the rest of our lines. Here's our marginal cost curve. We know that we're going to produce here because that's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. This intersection, when we drop an imaginary dotted line down, tells us our output. That's really all that it tells us. Now we add in our average variable cost. So we see that we are covering all of our variable costs, okay? The problem is when we add in our average total cost, at this point right here, we're covering our average variable cost. So we make a little bit of money when we sell, when we make and sell every unit. The problem is we don't make enough to cover both the average variable cost and the average fixed cost. That is our issue. So this vertical distance is our per unit loss. Then take that vertical distance and multiply it by Q, and then we get the area of our loss, okay? Now the question is, why would you ever make anything if you were gonna lose money? Why wouldn't the business just immediately go under? And the answer is, since we can pay more than our variable cost, that means we have something left over to contribute to our fixed cost. And the fixed cost is something that we were going to pay anyway. Even if we shut down, we still have to pay our fixed cost. So think of it like a restaurant. If a restaurant has a rent payment that it must make every month of $2,000, then imagine it has variable cost of $10,000. So our total cost is $12,000. So let me write this down up here. All right. So we have, where's my pen, there we go. So we have rent of, I said $2,000. Okay, so rent is what's gonna represent our fixed cost. And then we have all of our other variable costs of $10,000. Okay, so this is what we pay our employees and our food and all that sort of stuff. If we have no employees and no food, this becomes zero, okay? So now let's say, so that gives us a total, by the way, of $12,000 in cost. So our, now let's say we have $11,000 in revenue. So by selling food, we get $11,000. Well, $11,000 is less than $12,000, so we're losing money. Now, a, a poor business person might say, well, I'm losing $1,000 every month, so I'm out. But a smart business person would say, well, if I shut down, I still have to pay 
two grand in rent because I'm under contract. I got to pay that $2,000 no matter what until my lease is up. So until my lease is up and this fixed cost becomes variable, I'm going to continue because if I don't continue and I have six months left on my lease, that means I lose $12,000 over six months. If I do continue, then I'll only lose $6,000. And if you're going to lose something, you might want to lose as little as possible. Sorry about the dog barking in the background. Now, let's imagine a new situation where the price drops even further. Here's our marginal cost. Where are we going to produce? Think about that for a second. Where are we going to produce? We are going to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's where we will always produce, the intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost. Now, when we add in our average variable cost, if our average variable cost is below, I'm sorry, above our marginal revenue slash demand slash price, then that means that, basically to go back to our restaurant example, we have our Oops, let me get my pen going. So we've got our $10,000 in variable cost, our $2,000 in rent. We still have our same $12,000, but now let's say we only have $8,000 in revenue. Well, that means that every month we stay open, we're losing $4,000. And by, would you rather lose $4,000 or $2,000? The answer, of course, is you're only going to lose 2000 if you're given the choice. So since you can't cover your variable cost, the 8000 cannot cover the variable cost and contribute something to the fixed cost, because that's the case, you're better off shutting down. So you can look through this example. It comes from the book, and you can kind of see all of these different things. Read through that on your own. So here we have a number of different scenarios, okay? And this is going to be important, so let's pay attention. Each of these horizontal lines represents a different price. It represents basically a different horizontal demand curve. So if we're all the way down here, we're not covering our variable cost. And remember that we're always going to produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. As the marginal revenue curve goes upward, we have we're producing different quantities, okay? Because the horizontal line is the marginal revenue and the marginal cost is sloping up, okay? So as the price rises, meaning the demand curve moves vertical, we get all of these different points. Now, this is kind of interesting notation right here, this dotted line of the marginal cost curve. The reason that it's dotted, pause and take a guess. An educated guess. The reason that it's dotted is because nobody's going to produce here. Okay, so this is this is impossible. It doesn't even matter what this period of the marginal cost curve is because no one will ever produce. If you're not covering your average variable cost, you're not going to produce. So that means that this part of the curve, for practical purposes, doesn't exist. Now, here we're going to produce at a loss. Here, we're going to produce at a loss. So anywhere in here, the business will produce in the short run. Then we get to here, and now all of a sudden, we break even. Okay, so we're not making any economic profit, but we're covering our explicit and implicit costs. Here, we're making a profit. So we take the vertical distance between these two, right? And that gives us this area of profit. Okay, very good. So now you see it. We shut down if P is below point B. Okay, so anywhere down here when price is below point B. So you've got these three questions. Should the firm produce? Yes, if price is equal to or greater than minimum average variable cost. Now remember, this is, of course, in the short run. So next chapter, we're going to talk about the long run, and things will be a little bit different, because in the long run, there are no, no fixed costs at all, only variable costs. So what quantity should you produce? You should always produce 
where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That will be true all the time. And what production, and will we result in economic profit only if price exceeds ATC, which price, of course, is the same as the marginal revenue curve and the same as the demand curve. So here's another little example. You can kind of see um, what we're going to do, what our sort of the price is that's going to get us where we need to be. Now here's the last really important point. So we have here our marginal cost curve, okay, which is the supply curve for an individual firm. Okay, the supply curve, small s, for an individual firm is its marginal cost curve. Because just like you, we, you've seen, you know, this sort of represents the um, all the cost stuff. We're going to have a demand curve that's going to come in here, right? It's going to be horizontal because that's how we do it in a perfect, purely competitive market. And then this check mark down here, which nobody really cares about because it's in the region of the zone where we will not produce. So this is one firm's, or part of one firm's supply and demand situation. Now let's look at the entire market. So our capital S is the market's supply curve, which is the sum of the marginal cost curves of all the individual businesses. Okay, so the thousands and thousands and thousands of purely competitive firms out there. That's what we see right here. Then we have our downsloping demand curve, which is what we would expect. The market demand curve is downsloping, just like it always has been. Well, what that gives us, and this shouldn't surprise you, is an equilibrium price-quantity combination. And what we're most concerned with is this equilibrium price, okay? Because this price right here, 111, is going to wind up becoming the demand curve that an individual firm sees. This is why they're price takers. Okay, So this 111, which gives us a marginal revenue curve, price, demand curve, above average total cost at the quantity that we're going to look at, right? So we've got marginal cost intersecting average total cost at its lowest point. We produce where marginal revenue intersects marginal cost. And then we draw this vertical line right here in between the intersection point of marginal revenue and marginal cost, and then that imaginary line, which isn't imaginary here, but and uh, the intersection of average total cost. And then that gives us this period of economic but of course, sometimes we might have demand shift leftward. Okay, so this is, you know, VCRs when DVD players come out. Well, all of a sudden now, this is our new price. And now we come through here. So at this price, okay, here's our new intersection, marginal revenue and marginal cost. We're above average variable cost, so we're going to produce but we are below average total cost. So now this becomes our period of economic loss. So should we shut down? Well, we're going to have our shutdown. Shutting down for a little bit doesn't mean that we will shut down forever because low prices can obviously be temporary. That's it. Thank you very much.